Next week is going to be a special week here at Springhouse. Next uh, next Sunday, it's actually the 17th anniversary of being in this building to the day. Next week, and uh, we're going to have uh, one gathering next Sunday because we have. Uh, our Fall Fest that evening, okay? So we're going to have one gathering uh, next Sunday. It will be this gathering, and then we have our Fall Fest that will begin at 6 o'clock uh, next week. And uh, Pastor Kim still needs a few more volunteers. So appreciative to the number of people who have signed up to help. So if, if you are interested, please see her today. Uh, she said this morning, boy, she could use 10 more and really feel set uh, for the evening. I think uh, candy, we always need candy. I don't know if they've gotten enough candy, but we always need more candy. Uh, there's never enough candy, right, James? Never enough candy. So bring some more candy if, if, if you can. Uh, that would be great. Also next week, uh, next week, we're going to begin translating our services into Spanish live. And so if you have any Hispanic friends uh, who would like to attend our main gathering, we're going to begin translating our services uh, in real time uh, here through a headset pack that we're going to have make, make available. So please, uh, if you have anybody uh, that would be interested in that, please invite them. Uh, and it kind of goes along with next week where I'm going to be sharing. We're in the middle of this series called out. Next week, I'm going to share some vision about a particular a particular area that I feel Springhouse is called to. So it's going to be a special day. Make time to be here uh, in the house next Sunday. God has saved the very best for right now. Would you guys welcome Pastor Allen? Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to ask Michael to stay just a minute. If you'll go ahead and play, brother. I believe I have a word from the Lord, but it's short. But God works in quick. But what I don't want to do is miss a moment. All during worship, I just wept and prayed in the Holy Spirit. And Brian shared, and Elder Brian shared in the first service, over communion, and I wasn't sure that he would share the same thing in second service, but he did, and I'm so grateful. I don't know if it's one person or if it's many, but what he shared is so powerful. You're sitting in here this morning, and you've gone through battles, and you've been through struggles, and you wonder if God is good. How can this keep happening? How do bad things happen? I'm here to tell you he is good. God is good. We live in a fallen and corrupt and perverse generation and culture that bombards us on every facet from every media form, even from certain bodies that claim to be bodies of Christ. And they want to tell us that God's this and God. Let me tell you, God is good. And what I want to emphasize is that we're not human doings. We are human beings. And your first call, he was so all over it. Brian could have just preached the message. In fact, he did. And I just need to step back. Your first call is to him. It's not to be a pastor. It's not to be a bus driver. It's not to be something. It's to be his. And I don't know if you're here and you've never accepted that call to be. Or maybe you feel like you were and you're not where you ought to be now. But this moment in this part of the service is for you. I'm just going to ask him to pray play and if I'm not I don't want to embarrass anybody listen there's nothing to be embarrassed about I've been that one but if you're here and you're uncertain about your first call I challenge you just to reach out to it right now and let him fill you with all the goodness that is him and all the goodness that he has for you and receive it this morning and know that God is good and you are His and He is yours. The see the hand, the scripture tells you that you are, you are the apple of His eye. 
and he holds you in his hand. And I don't know what the world's telling you. I don't know what your culture's telling you. But he loves you. And not in the false platitudes that we use the word love, but God agapes you. He loves you so unconditionally, so far beyond what you understand that the word is, that he gave his son to die for you. That's love. So if you will, just in this moment, Father, I don't know who they are, but you do. And if they're here in the world and the culture around them has beaten them so, Lord, let them with lifted hands receive you today. Lord, if they knew what it was to taste and see that you were truly good, but they've accepted the counterfeit meals of the world, Lord, let them come back to the fresh water. Lord, let them draw from the springs of life that can flow within them, God. Let them taste from the manna, the bread of heaven this morning, and be filled to such fullness, God, of your goodness to them, Lord. Lord, let us help others find their first calling and that's to be children of God in Christ's name Amen Amen If that's you and you just want to see me later I want to hug your neck and tell you he's good and that you are in him Pastor Kevin started us off uh, let me couple of quick things. First of all, um, two Saturdays from yesterday. I get confused when I try to do Back to the Future. Two Saturdays from yesterday, we will have our eighth annual Mad Max Toy Run. Between Bikers Rutherford County and this church, we have helped over 500 families and just over 1,500 people, the parents and family, kids and all that, to have Christmas and a Christmas meal. So thank you. Give yourselves a round. Y'all have done that. It's been a blessing. What we're asking is if you can help us um, in two Sundays, November the 7th. I don't know who's up that day, and I'm sorry. But we're going to make it look like Christmas where kids just rip paper and everywhere, and we're going to ask you to bring unwrapped new Christmas presents for ages birth through 15 and bring for the front area here so that we can help offset some of the cost toward helping these families this year. So that's that one. Then the other thing says to rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Boy, I'm tired of mourning. I need a little rejoicing. And so Friday night, uh, Coach Bragg and the Lancaster Christian Knights won their quarterfinal playoff round in advance to the state semifinals next Friday. So congratulations to the Lancaster Knights. It was nice to watch that and watch these boys persevere, and man, it was great. So that's all that. If you will, stand, and Esau was hairy, I am sweaty, so pray that it doesn't mess up the mic this service like it did first service, and that my eyes work. So let's read together. Don't, oh, hey, did it jump way ahead? It did. Here we go. There's the first one. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Ready to recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Amen. Lord, bless your word and help me say what I need to say. You may be seated. So Pastor Kevin did a phenomenal job setting this series up. And we're just going to touch base real quick, and then we're going to get into today. 
So you're called. We learned that. We are all called. Can you say, I am called? All right. I hate when pastors do that, but I'm going to do it to you. We are called. Sometimes we got to hear it, right? Hear the word of the Lord. We got to hear it. I am called. The second thing he said is that we don't have to fear. Listen, we don't have to fear the what when we know the who. We get so nervous about what's God calling me to do or what is the thing. And, and aren't you glad that he doesn't tell you the end at the beginning? Because if he told you everything up front, about 97.8 of us probably go, nope, I'm not in that one. I'm out. It's just like our sister testified, you know, uh, in the offering. I want the blessing, but I don't, want to, I don't want to go through the trials to get the blessing, you know, the miracle. Thank God he doesn't tell us all of it at the beginning. But the key thing is we don't have to fear the what when we know the who. Uh, Got to have a willing go. Delayed, diso delayed obedience, disobedience. Got to have a willing yes on the table. That's one of the things that Pastor Kevin has shared so much over the last year uh, with the staff and with us in the body is put your yes on the table. Don't, don't hesitate. God has put it out there and let God direct. Listen, have your yes ready. Be ready. Have your hands open. How can I serve? The other part is he's equipping you. He has, I liken it to the story, the parable of the kingdom, the treasure buried in a field, the hidden treasure buried in the field. And he sold everything he had for the field. He didn't sell it for the treasure. He did. But he bought the field but he had to go work. He had to unearth that thing to get the treasure. Listen, God has earthed gifts and equipping in you that we have to process out as he calls us and we define that calling in our life. So sometimes it's going to be dirty. Sometimes we're going to get sweaty. It's going to be a little messy. But God has placed gifts and callings in you that we have to develop with the unction of the Holy Spirit leading us to mature those, to graduate those, to make them mature, complete in our lives so that we're fully capable in his hands. Listen, if he has called you, he's equipped you. Simply be faithful. Listen, Pastor Kevin showed the thing with Arwen sharing about her mom, Pastor Margaret. Be thankful for the ordinary days. Just be faithful. God does not need your extraordinary. He needs your ordinary, and he will bring the extraordinary. He don't need me to be super this, super that. He just needs, needs me to be me in my everyday, walking around, eating, working, living, just doing what I do, and then in the proper perspective and in the moment, He'll bring the extraordinary to do what he wants to get accomplished. Nike's got this slogan, just do it. I'm going to steal from them. Just be you. Just be you. You are, here we go. We're going to do the call and response. Repeat. I am the best me there is. There you go. There, I can tell you right now, there is nobody better at being Hal Laughlin than that man sitting right there. Thank God for it. Nobody better being Kenny Mitchell. Hi, Aaron. Hadn't seen you in a while. Good to see you in the house. Than Kenny Mitchell. Nobody is better at being you than you. So just be you. Be faithful. Probably the greatest thing I got out of last week's service is when he said, this is what you need to do. Wait, rest, and surrender. Listen, we're not waiting like we're waiting on a bus. You're not sitting on the bench just sitting there going, boy, when that's 415, we'll get here. You're waiting on him and his timing. When I first felt a call back to ministry, I was working about nine and a half, ten years as a paint manager, paint drywall for Larry Adams, and I was going to these big 5,000, 12, 15,000 square foot homes, some with elevators, full-size swimming pools in their basement, and I'm like, 
But I was just doing my thing. Happy. Had a company van. I was making decent money. Had pretty good hours. But I felt like the Lord was calling me back to ministry. And when I told Pastor Ronnie, okay, well, we'll pray and see what that looks like. It was about two years before we started to realize and fully begin to look at what that looks like. So I just drove him and Pastor Wayne and Pastor Bruce crazy for, you know, what can I do? How can I help you? Can I? Well, I helped Ronnie build a batting cage. I helped Wayne do crazy stuff with the worship. I was all over the place. Just wait on the Lord. Don't get ahead of God's timing. We have a tendency in our zeal, in our passion for wanting to do well for the kingdom and wanting to please the Lord, that he gives us a dream or a thing, Joseph, and we're out here, you know, 21.8 miles an hour like King Henry, like uh, Derrick Henry running. We get so far ahead of God, he's back here on the 10 going, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not rushing that far. Slow down. We need to wait on the Lord and his timing for what he's called for. Next thing is we need to learn to rest in his strength. Don't mean be lazy. Don't mean, hey, I'm out, taking a weekend off, I'm just chilling. It means you can still be doing, but you've got to find your rest in him. Man, I'm telling you, I've had some crazy weeks. I got to speak on September 30th on Thursday night, and I was like, dear God, please, I'm done. I have nothing else to give. And I would like to say that the last three weeks have been, man, I'm on a mountaintop and things are great, but there's been two or three other things to where I just laugh. And, you know, this weekend, praying for today, I said, God, I've got nothing. I got nothing left. I don't think I can, I don't think I, can, I got anything to give. He said, good. Because it's not you. They don't need your word. They don't need your opinion and your thought. They need what I need to share. You study, you prepare, and then let me do what I do and rest in me. So you got to learn to rest in his strength. And then finally, we got to surrender. It's not your call. It's his call. He has put the call on your life. You didn't make up your own call, and if you did, I'm backing away from you. Because I don't want to be near that catastrophe, that lightning bolt, that wreck that's about to happen. Because the Bible was it saying in Proverbs, man plans his way, but it is the Lord that makes the path and processes. Don't make your own plans. Surrender your will. Surrender your desire. Surrender what you think your call is to him and accept his call. So that's a brief uh, look at what we've done. So we know we're called, but to what? I don't know if y'all know the culture we live in. If you, if you don't, you've been living in a hermit's crab cave somewhere. We live in a culture that's all about position. It's about getting a title I got to be first. I got to be top. I got to have the most. I got to get, I need all the possessions. I got to have, I got to have, I got to have. The more I have, the better I look, which makes me famous and gives me the acclaim and all that. And it will suck you dry. It will suck the life right out of you if you try to live a kingdom lifestyle in a fallen culture. And too many of us as believers have fallen to that deception. I try, I, I'm trying my best to live a kingdom culture, but I'm trying to live it by the parameters of a fallen culture. We're not called to that. That is not what God called us. We live in an instant gratification, entitlement-driven, disposable culture. I want it, and I want it right now. If that microwave can't make my two packets of apple cinnamon Quaker oatmeal, in a minute, 10 seconds. I, I want it in a minute. And then I get it, and it's not, it's clumping, and it ain't right. You know, it's, you know, I mean, I deserve it. I work so hard. I worked harder than them. I'm entitled to this. Or we use things, and we throw them away, because I'll just go get another one. Have we used people that way? 
I am chief among the sinners, Paul said. And I repent and I apologize. If I have ever misused our relationship, anybody, forgive us. God calls us to community and relationship, not just take somebody for what they can do for you and use them up and then I move to the next one. That's not us. It's all about me, baby. It's all about me. We had an elder that used to tongue in cheek. I can't make my tongue do that. I got a short, stubby tongue. But he'd tongue in cheek about it. It's all about me. Let me tell you something. There ain't nothing about you that I want or anybody wants unless it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. They better see Jesus in you. That's what will draw them. So we have been called to create a counterculture. We are kingdom people living in a worldly culture, and God is calling us to be disciples, not just believers. How many, show of hands, how many understand there's a difference between being a believer and a disciple? Demons believe. That's not a category I want to stay in. If a demon believes, I think I want to move to a little deeper level. I want to be a disciple. I want to be a follower. I want to be somebody that follows him wherever he goes and let him teach me, take his burden and his yoke for they're easy and light and come learn of me. I want him to teach me. I want the Holy Spirit who, when he said, I'm going away to prepare a place, but I'm going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send one just like me, Alos, just the same as me, and he will teach you in all things. That's what I want to be. I want to be a disciple. And, and there's a couple of examples. I can use one from the Old Testament. Now, a disciple is great leader, Moses, chapter 4 in Exodus. And we'll look at some more when he calls his first disciples in Matthew 4. He called them in the midst of their perverse culture to be agents of change and produce a counterculture. So you want to be the greatest? My position, I want to be the greatest. I better learn to be the least. I better learn to serve. I better not serve gladly those that are above me. Everybody can serve you, boss, with a smile and, hey, how you do? Hi, can I bring you some coffee? Would you like a $5 donut? They're $7 a piece, but I'll bring you a dozen. You know, I, I'll serve those above me. I'm not kidding. They're great, man. Best $5 I've ever spent in my life. The, oh, God, forgive me for donuts. Man, I'll get lost. They're good. I hadn't had one in about... I ain't, <laughs> Excuse me, I'm in a moment of weakness. 23 pounds, I waste Saturday. God, please let me get to 30. But, nope, 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 hang on, hang on. I didn't, I'm, I'm not getting there without sacrificing a cost. I'm having to give up something and change from the inside out to change from the outside in. You hear what I'm saying? I sinned the other night. We won a playoff game and I cheated Instead of just having my Fiesta, Fiesta omelet with five slices of tomato, Kirk, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll walk it off tomorrow. I had, a, I had a waffle. But I did have sugar-free syrup. But, again, position. You want to be the greatest? Be the least. Be a servant. And not just to those that are above you. Be a servant to all. Be a servant to somebody that can never repay it to you that has no resources, has no ability, no reason to re return a benefit to you. Serve them. Scripture tells us in the New Testament, humble yourself where? Under the hand of the Lord in what? In due season, he'll exalt you. Let's have a little bit more of this and allow him to do that instead of ourselves. Paul says this in Philippians. Though he was God, he did not think equality with God was something to cling to. Man, you're talking about title. King of kings, Lord of lords. Uh, Jehovah Sabaoth, the king of the Lord's army. The man, Jesus has titles. Lots of them. 
But Scripture says he didn't cling to that. He humbled himself and came to earth as a man and walked among us to feel, touch, and know, and empathize with what we go through so that we would have a great high priest that knew that we could bring our requests and our burdens to him because he understands. Possessions, there's a danger here. You don't have possessions. Possessions will have you. If you're living in the kingdom, trying to do the world's culture, there's a fine line where you won't have possessions, they'll have you. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. I can't do that, dude, and I done forgot his name. Short little foreign guy. Little bu- yeah, that guy. I'd watch that, I think I was 25 in the 80s. And I'd see boats. I don't want a boat like Fred Jones. Fred's got a nice boat. I couldn't be happy with fishing boat. I wanted a yacht. I want that 150-footer, five-tier with the blackout and the helicopter pad. I got a nice motorcycle. The Lord blessed me with it. 2010, 536 miles when I got it brand new. And I got it for a great deal because the Lord blessed me with that. If I'm not careful, that motorcycle will have me instead of me using it for the kingdom. What you have belongs to him. Give it back and let him tell you when to pick it up. I've been riding that motorcycle for four weeks now because my truck, well, God bless my truck. He's trying. Thank God for Mike Dennison. Engine, transmission, whatever that thing in the front is, radiator, all of it's gone. We're getting the new stuff, new worse stuff. Uh oh, missing pieces. How long would it be? Probably another week. Mm, I'm fine. I'm riding my motorcycle. Good weather. There's a difference between a biker and a motorcyclist. My name is Alan Smith, and I am a motorcyclist. See, a biker, they just ride. Hell or high water, rain, sleet, snow and hail, don't matter. They're going to ride. Do you know what it's like to be dressed for something? an appointment and you ride your bike to that appointment and it's nice and sunny when you get there and then it pours down rain while you're there and then you got to ride back in your nice clothes and you're soaking wet, it ain't fun. I'm not a biker. Sorry, Rob, Critter. I'm a motorcyclist. A brother in the church, I found out this week, he wanted to talk to me about 2 Samuel 24. We were going to meet for lunch. And telling him, he's asking about my truck. And I said, well, it's at least another week, maybe more. It rained while we were having lunch. Thank the Lord I brought my cover. Covered the bike. Lunch, it stops raining. Get on the dry bike. Hallelujah. Put my wet cover in the trunk of the trike. And I'm riding home. I get home. Brother calls me. He said, hey, pastor. Um, you said it's going to be another week or so. Listen. I don't mean, I don't want to offend you. I said, no offense taken, Justin Bashir. Don't take no offense. He said, if, he said, I know you ate real well at the lunch. I know you're trying to lose weight. He said, if you can fit in it, I want to let you use my 2016 Sherry Camaro. He said, it's automatic. Can you drive it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can drive it. He said, well, I'll meet you at the church and we'll just see. I pulled up on the trike and there's this gorgeous midnight black, shiny as can be. I've never seen something shine like that. Chevy Camaro. Got those black rims and chrome and you can see through it and you can see the red brake pads and all the, I mean, in, in this like, oh, 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 and he's just sitting there and it's just idling because it's in neutral. And my, my Harley would make a little sound, but I don't have the loud pops. So I can go, oh, mom. He's sitting in that Camaro and it's going, blah, 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 And then I pull up and he rolls the window down. I said, man, that thing sounds pretty. And he steps on the gas. And I'm like, ooh. Please, dear God, please, please let me be 40 pounds down right now. Please, please somehow. Make this fit there, please, God. It had those leather airport, you know, jet seats in it. And I said, is it all the way back? He said, I don't think so. So he leans it all the way back, tilts it back. 
And, and, and it's, it's, in, it's in neutral, and it's just, oh, and I'm like, oh, God, please, please let me sit in it. There's a couple of things. First of all, it sits that far off the ground. I'm just over six feet, not quite six one, and I weigh a little bit more than I should. I don't care if I was just in Bashir's size. Sitting in that thing on the ground was going to be a chore. And I don't know about y'all, but since 1999, for some reason, car makers think it's great. Instead of the big uh, open cabin, they think it's great for everything to go. It's hard to get your big old head in one of those cars. Oh, Jesus, please. Holding that rail. Please, Jesus. The door frame's right here. God, please let me be smooth. Like, so just pop that thing in there like a pimple, God. Yeah. There was no way I was getting in that car. And you know what? It's probably a good thing. Because I was already in a state of lust. I ain't gonna lie. I, was, I, ain't, I ain't lying. I, I know it's funny. I ain't kidding. I was in that dude's car and I was thinking, man, I, be careful for I wish. I wish I could afford a car like that. I wish, I, I wish, I wish, I wish. If you don't have the proper perspective, you'll not have possessions. Possessions will have you, and that's this culture. It says get all you want when God says it's better to give than to receive. That brother was trying to be scriptural. He was trying to bless and give. I just wish I could receive it. But we got to watch that stuff in our life. Now we got to rush. We got time. I have never, huh? show of hands, you have never seen one episode of the Kardashians. I hope to God there's 99.9%. Shame on y'all if y'all seen that. Show. I don't even like seeing commercials for it. They need Jesus. I know that. Thank the Lord I ain't never seen one of them. I thought it was 15 minutes fame, not 15 years. Good gracious. Come on, people. This world takes the stupidest things to make somebody famous. And we're so gullible that we look at it and go, yeah! What is wrong with us? I'm serious. What's wrong with us? We applaud and give acclaim to some of the dumbest things in this world. You got people in foreign nations hiding right now in, in bunkers and buildings trying to have church. And we acclaim people like that and we don't recognize people are giving of their lives that the gospel could go out. What's wrong with us? We live in a warped culture. And God is calling us to change that. Paul said in Galatians, for I am now seeking the approval of man or God. Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of God. You can't serve God in mammon. You can't look for fame and acclaim and still be a servant of God. Those diametrically opposite. The, the magnets that never touch, they'll never touch. You got to be a servant of all and be humble to be a servant of God. So is there a cosmic mystery about figuring out the call of God on your life? No. Brian already shared the first one. First one's pretty simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess with your mouth you will be saved. Your first calling is to be His. Everybody is not called to be a full-time vocational minister. But everybody is called to full-time ministry. Everyone in this room, you're called to full-time ministry. Well, I don't know if I got what it takes. I, you talked about equipping and all this other stuff. I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's look at Scripture. Now he puts the eyes on and prays that he can see. We've already had the burning bush. He already knows that God's called him and that he has the greatest name in the history of the universe, I am, backing him up. 
And he tells you to tell them, I am. What more does Moses need? But yet he still fears and still doubts. And he says, what if they won't believe me and will not obey me, but say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord asked him, what's that in your hand? For 40 years, he served as a shepherd for Jethro and his flocks. He had something in his hand that he knew every, he knew every facet and form of it because he handled it every day, handling those sheep. He knew every crease, every grain of that rod. And the Lord said, what's in your hand? And he said, a staff. Let me tell you something. When the Lord's calling you, you may already have it in your hand. It may already be what you're tangible and know comfortably. It may be that thing, because then God said, throw it down. Sometimes we have to lay down the gifts that we have for God to allow us to go back then and pick it up and bring deliverance. Are you willing to lay down what's in your hand? That's Old Testament. I need something new. Okay. Matthew 4. As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. And they were casting a net in the sea since they were fishermen. Duh. They're fishermen. That's what they do. They had it in their hands. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They were in a culture where they were fishing to provide for their family, to make money. Messiah comes and said, you follow me. You're still a fisherman, but I'm going to change what you bring in. You're going to be a fisher of men. And immediately, they left the nets and followed. Then, going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. For they were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately, they left their boat and their father and followed him. Sometimes you're going to have to leave people behind to follow the call. You may have to leave a job. You may have to leave relationships. There may be things that you've got to let go to be able to be obedient, to follow him. While everyone is not called to full-time ministry as a vacation, vocation, it's not a vacation, trust. We're all called to full-time ministry. Pastors alone will not affect the culture. But when God has full-time hairdressers, teachers, checkout clerks, doctors, medical office followers, Building, builders, office workers, whatever your profession. When we start infiltrating our culture with the anointing and the fullness of Christ in us, we can change the culture. Renee started taking classes for hair at the age of 18 in high school. She went through training. She's now been doing hair for 40 years. Well, not quite. I don't want to give your age away. Close to that. She's, anyway, leave that part alone. That's not important. When she drops a cape on somebody and she's rinsing their hair, she's cutting their hair, she's doing, making them look pretty. I can't tell you how many times she's come home and said, pray for so-and-so. Be praying for so-and-so. They were in my chair today. And they shared their life and their heart. And how many times she sat while washing their hair, praying in the Holy Spirit under her breath for them to be able to have joy and hope. God needs full-time Christian hairdressers to change the culture. Justin Bashir did not grow up one day from a little child and said, you know what? I'm going to build great things with wood with my hands. That was probably the last thing on his mind, especially when he was at Laverne High School. 
But God put a gift in that man. And if you don't believe it, look at some of the creations he's made on JB Designs. And God has taken him and put him in some of the most expensive, finest homes around this area to take what God's blessed him with to put into somebody's home. Come on out, praise and worship team. But he is able to be an agent to change the culture in that family or in that neighborhood when he's there. Because I know JB's heart, and he shares the love of Christ with people in the gospel. Carrie Hart works with people doing airplane mechanics. Man, God needs those people. I don't know what it is you do. I don't know what your profession may be, some of you. But I can tell you this, God has put a gift and a calling in your life to be used where you're at. God calls people to Africa. He called Ronnie. He called Bruce. He's called others. Honduras, Cambodia, wherever. Yeah. You know, God calls people to Nashville, to the bank, or he calls you to the doctor's office where you serve. He could call you to be the president of a mega million shoe company. See, the deal is, the seed doesn't tell the farmer where to be planted. The farmer sows the seed where he wants to, to get the greatest harvest. You don't get to tell God what your calling is. I don't get to tell him that. We've got to yield ourselves and be willing to be seeds in the hand of the sower and let him sow us into a culture that is so diverse and so messed up that when we spring up and grow, that you change your pocket of culture wherever you are. And the more of us that do that, it will grow like wildfire. And we'll see change. We'll see people that need to be and answer their first calling if we'll be willing to answer his calling in your life. We'll let the praise and worship team sing for a minute. Then I want to close with something.